Coming up on DTNS, Arizona tries to outlaw Apple's App Store payment policy. The Kings of Leon release an NFT album on the blockchain, and Jay Z sells title to Jack Dorsey. It's all real news. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, March 4th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. From Oakland, California, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. You know, I am I am looking forward to that day where you're saying, from my house in Austin, Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. Congratulations. We were just talking a little bit about that on GDI. Let's see. Yes, yeah, soon, soon. Get that wider conversation on our expanded show, Good Day Internet. Become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. WhatsApp rolled out support for voice and video calling to its desktop for app for Mac and Windows. This is currently limited to one-on-one -on -one calls, but WhatsApp plans to support group calls in the future. Apple launched a new service on its data and privacy website to automatically transfer your iCloud photos to Google Photos, if you would like to do that. Apple accounts must have two-factor authentication on to use the service, and Apple says it'll take about three to seven days, depending on how many photos you have, to complete the transfer. A new preview build of Windows rolling out to insiders for testing includes new system icons and a taskbar widget using Microsoft's fluent design style. This comes as Microsoft is working on a sweeping visual rejuvenation of Windows, codenamed Sun Valley. Separately, Microsoft also updated the Edge browser to include vertical tabs and startup 41% faster by actually never fully shutting down. Qualcomm announced Snapdragon Sound with new processors, Bluetooth audio system on a chips, and codecs like AppDex Adaptive to achieve playback of hi-fi music up to 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. Qualcomm's components show up in headphones and earbuds from Bose, Jabra, One More, Sennheiser, Audio-Technica, Anchor, just to name a few. The first Snapdragon Sound products are expected in the next few months, with Xiaomi and Audio-Technica signing up as the first two Snapdragon Sound partners. Partners. Bloomberg sources say that Nintendo will announce a Switch console with a larger 7-inch 720p OLED display later this year. The updated Switch will also reportedly support 4K graphics when connected to a te television. All right, let's talk about who should wave to title. I'll tell you, Tom. Square announced that it will buy a majority stake in music service title. Title is owned in part by musical artists who will continue to hold shares in title. Co-founder Jay-Z, a.k.a. Sean Carter, will get a seat on Square's board. Square is known for its retail cash register service, but also offers loans and bank-like storage and transfer. The full suite of Square tools will eventually be offered to artists through title for better royalty payments and fostering things like merchandise sales. Jay-Z said, quote, artist deserves better tools and to assist them in their creative journey, end quote. Square CEO Jack Dorsey said, Square will create ecosystems of tools for sellers and individuals, and we will do the same for artists. Square has worked with artists before, like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, giving away a million dollars to fans who message them with their Square Cash App usernames. Title will operate independently inside Square alongside the seller and cash app platforms. Square's hardware lead, Jesse Drugster, will serve as interim head of Title. I think this <laughs> is amazing for a few reasons. One, uh, this is Title saying, you know what it's about? It's about being in the money flow. So yeah, we got a streaming service. That's not going to go away. Uh, yeah, we want to get artists paid, but we would like to get them paid more places than just title. So I fully expect this to be we showcase, almost like Microsoft does with its Surface devices, we showcase a payment system in title and then shop that out to other music services. Now, obviously, Apple's not going to do it. Maybe Spotify won't, but there's lots of others like Deezer and such out there. Uh, and artists putting some pressure on companies for that might work. There also will be some other products spin out of this that will be non-reliant on a streaming service. Also, super smart for Jay-Z, 
to get a spot on Square's board and keep the artists as shareholders. All the investors like Sprint, they got paid off. They're great. Jay-Z does what the VCs do. He moves onto a board. Once you move onto a board, you're likely to move on other boards and have more yeah. influence and have more investments. So this is huge for Jay-Z. It's good for the artists because they all keep their shares in title, which are now shares in Square. And there's a payment system rolling out, hopefully, that will benefit artists if it's rolled out right. I mean, to look at the pathway of Jay-Z from where he began to where he is, title was essentially propped up by Jay-Z and Beyonce uh, and, and some affiliated artist-related exclusives. I mean, that's what propped title up. It, otherwise, it, it would have been more and like, like it was before Jay-Z got involved, more like a Deezer or something like that, a or like a Pandora that just did not have the same kind of oomph to move into what was increasingly a commodity-driven market that was dominated by big money like Apple and Spotify. Where does this fit in the gigantic landscape of that? I'm a little bit more pessimistic than you are, Tom, <laughs> although I do see the idea that, uh, uh, okay, so now are they kind of like a super-powered SoundCloud? Are they more mm -hmm. of a mm -hmm. mega artist friendly thing that is a little yeah. bit more of a glossy name that will allow you when you're just starting out to put more stuff exclusively on this because they're going to give you a micro loan to fund your merch or they're going to put you in touch with like that kind of stuff? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, with I apologies to Drake, it's Tidal that started from the bottom and now they're square. Yep, that's so. what just happened. So, no, but I think, Justin, I think that is a really good point. I mean, if you are a title fan up until this point, it's because you like really good audio quality. Not that people don't like good audio quality, but some people will pay for that, or, where or, many or, do or, not. Or, or, or in my case, you really wanted to watch the Kanye West famous video, which was exclusive to title for five minutes. I also signed up for that uh, briefly as well. <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, but you know that that was sort of the whole thing. And so there were you know a lot of folks saying. Well, there's nothing wrong with Tidal. It just doesn't have the numbers that a Spotify or Apple Music has. And what exactly do you use to draw in more, uh, not only creators, but also, uh, you know, listeners like me, when I don't necessarily care if it sounds so great because, I don't know, I'm, you know, on a jog or in my car anyway. What do I really know the difference kind of thing? This is a very, this is a very interesting potentially interesting. I don't really know what's what, you know, how how creators themselves will be able to uh make use of Square being now the the boss man. But it does it it does change title a lot because title again before was you know, I I was sort of waiting for it to die because I just didn't think that they could keep the user base up. Well, all right, what, one last thing on this. Tidal now wants to position themselves as an entity that will get your music out to a lot of people, will bankroll you in key elements, especially as you are starting up or going into an album cycle. Effectively, they are trying to replace a record company. They're not necessarily looking, I mean, like the, their value proposition to young or undiscovered artists is that of will be your do it yourself, your DIY record company, if you are just getting started out, at least by their language there, which is an interesting idea. I wouldn't be shocked to see titles start to push more of uh, publish here, and we will publish your stuff to Spotify and Apple Music, which there are precedents for that. They could start, I hadn't even thought about that. They could start doing that and be able to say, and we'll make sure that the, the payments flow, and then they start to become a bargaining uh, power in those deals that artists put. If you, if, if we follow what you're saying about them being more like a record label, that's fascinating. Well, a lot of entertainment news today and <laughs> specifically music news, the band Kings of Leon will release the album. When you see yourself as a non fungible token, you've heard of NFTs. This is one of them on March 5th, one of the three tokens as part of a series called NFT yourself. One token is the album package with exclusive content and vinyl for 50 bucks. The second is 18 golden tickets with exclusive art, which offers four front row seats for life, personal driver and a concierge service and backstage access at shows. 
Six of these will be auctioned and 12 will be vaulted. And the third offering is six NFTs for exclusive audiovisual art ranging from $95 to $2,500. The album without exclusives will be available through standard music services. You know, kind of what we were talking about before. The album goes on sale Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time for two weeks, after which no more NFTs will be made. So, you know, get it while you getting good if this is something that you want. The art tokens will sell until Sunday at 8 p.m., which is also when the auctions or the golden tickets will end. Because of the nature of NFTs, Kings of Leon can decide where the money for resale goes. The band will send some of its proceeds to a charity that helps out-of-work touring professionals. Maximum prices for resale can also be set to deter scalping. This is fascinating. They've really uh, thought about this. Some of it's weird. In detail, uh, The idea yeah. of vaulting part of your NFTs like like they were premier art and you'll like we'll wait for them to go up in value and sell them later uh, is odd. Uh, but when you're talking about golden tickets with front row seats for life, uh, yeah. I guess maybe they want to limit that supply. I get that. It's a, it's uh, a scheme. Uh, but this is it's not the first band to make use of NFTs for an album, but it certainly is the most extensive. I think the idea here is NFTs are the entry into a digital version of any kind of collectible, which is you are deciding, a group of people are deciding that there is value to something. And, and before that, people sneered at the concept that these cheaply printed paper comics would be that. And, they, and, and cheaply printed cardboard squares could be that. Or, or beanie babies you would get at McDonald's could be that. There's no reason why a digital version uh, is, is any less valuable than a digital item is any less valuable as long as you were able to prove that it can't be duplicated, which was the only problem. For this... Who knows exactly how deep the fandom of Kings of Leon are now, but if you are looking at a music industry that is increasingly about maximizing your narrow audience as opposed to breaking wide into a gigantic audience, then figuring out new ways that you can offer exclusivity and a, a hierarchy to your fans is huge. I, I think that this is a, 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 a if it works, I think you will definitely see this replicated all over the place. Well, and this is definitely, I mean, Kings of Leon, I, I, I know the band. I'm not their biggest fan, but I, I, I know the band. <laughs> to, to get, like, personal drivers and concierge services in order to go to a Kings of Leon show, I'm like, this is a, they're being a little silly right now. But, again, there's probably more than a few people out there who are like, no, this is really cool. And this is why this is really cool. And also this just didn't exist as something that I could buy before. So yeah. I think it's less about, Oh, is this a cool thing to buy? And is this possible to buy? And that's where I bands like this. It doesn't have to be a band artists, you know, anybody who are thinking outside the box on this, I, you know, I got to, got to give them props because it is a brave new world. Yeah. NFTs going mainstream is closer, and uh, they won't waste a moment to use somebody around the world. Facebook reports its computer vision program, Seer, scored 84.2% on ImageNet's classification accuracy score, better than existing models. Seer was trained on more than 1 billion public unlabeled images from Instagram, because it's Facebook. So they used Instagram, but they were using public images, not private images. This is a significant advance for self-supervised learning, where the model can learn to identify objects without being told what examples of the objects look like. So they don't show them a bunch of images of cats and say, that's a cat, that's a cat, that's a cat, and try to train it what a cat looks like. Seer used an algorithm called Suave to cluster groups of images with similar visual concepts. Now, eventually, you have to tell it, like, oh, that, that cluster there, that's a cat. Uh, but it learns what things are on its own. Then a type of convolutional network called RegNets captures the learning of the visual concepts and scales that to billions of parameters so that it can run in a reasonable amount of time. Seer was trained on 512 NVIDIA V100 GPUs with 32 gigabytes of RAM for 30 days. 
Facebook has released Sears general purpose library called Vissel for anyone to use with their own data sets and machine learning models uh, to help facilitate that accelerated self-supervised learning. Uh, Facebook will not share the image data set or the final Sear model itself. Partly they say because that model hasn't been perfected to you know look for things like bias and everything. They just wanted to see if they could get it to do it. And that was the purpose of this exercise. And they did 84.2%. Like, also, this is a huge milestone being yeah. self-supervised learning. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm always fascinated with, with, with how fast these kinds of things are, 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 are being put together. I'm curious to see where Facebook wants to slot themselves in in, in the current race for, for these kinds of technologies because it's a controversial one. Facebook is certainly not. Uh, of a, a company that is want for other uh, reasons to get into uh, a PR situation. So uh, I think as a technical story, it's very interesting. I'm curious to see how far they want to push it. All right, folks, what do you want to hear us talk about on the show? Uh, AIs are welcome, but we assume most of you are humans. Uh, let us know <laughs> on our subreddit. Submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Apple, you ever heard of it? It's this mm, company maybe. out here in California. I've heard of it. Like yeah. other big tech companies, it's facing government investigations and regulation worldwide. Specifically, Apple is facing scrutiny over its App Store policies that force companies to use only Apple's payment system, which Apple, of course, takes a cut of. The UK's Competition and Markets Authority said Thursday it has opened an investigation into whether Apple's App Store policies are unfair or anti-competitive. Reuters, meanwhile, reports that the European Union's antitrust investigators plan to announce a charge sheet against Apple in the coming weeks as a result of Spotify's complaint about the App Store policies. Two weeks ago, the U.S. state of North Dakota's Senate voted against passing a law requiring Apple to let developers use their own payment processing software and possibly alternative app stores. But Wednesday, Arizona's House of Representatives voted 31 to 29 to pass HB 2005, such a bill. Arizona's version requires companies with app stores that have more than 1 million downloads per year to let developers in Arizona offer alternative payment processors and let any developer offer alternative payment processing to Arizona users. Software stores for game consoles and music players were exempted, so it would apply to Google Play and the Apple App Store. The Arizona Senate would also have to pass it, and the governor would have to sign it for it to become law. But even if it does get defeated somewhere along the road in Arizona, Minnesota, Hawaii, and Georgia are considering similar laws, which are being pushed by Match Group, Spotify, and Epic Games. Yeah, so that, that that's what's going on here. This is a battle between Match, Spotify, and Epic versus Apple. They're trying to make Apple fight this in a bunch of different states. Uh, so far, they haven't been able to get a state to pass it. Arizona's the closest they've come so far. We'll see uh, what happens there. A lot, a lot of people are expecting it to fail in the Arizona Senate or maybe not, maybe, maybe even be vetoed by the governor. Uh, but Epic Match and Spotify are going to keep putting on the pressure. I wonder if this, let's, let's pretend for a moment this got passed. This went yeah. through in Arizona. Sure. And I, I want to sidestep for the moment the idea of like, well, how do you have this only apply in Arizona, right? Because uh, there's there's some technical interests, interesting technical problems there. But let's say they did it, and Apple's like, fine, 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 we'll just do it. What if Apple said, great, and this would be allowed under the Arizona version of the law, you can use your own payment processing, but you have to pay a fee to get in the App Store. Then it's free to yeah. get in the App Store if you use our payment processing, uh, or you can pay this flat yearly fee. I mean, I feel like that would be their only recourse. I uh, yeah, Sarah, go ahead. Um, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what you've laid out, Tom, is sure that would be a way that Apple could play nicely, but wouldn't that make people go absolutely batch it uh, for th those reasons? And also, wouldn't that make how other states might? focus on this, a 
I don't know. It it sounds like a um, it's it it sounds messy. It sounds well. Messy. Let, let's let's all take a moment to focus on the real winners here, and that is state capital lobbying firms because uh, they are probably having just a bumper crop where a lot of money is coming in, so they can talk to the people that they need to talk to to get mm. these bills pushed forward. Because the the victory for Match Epic and Spotify is not even necessarily that these things are gonna cross the finish line. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. The 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 point is that they're being mentioned in the news and the idea is that, oh, look at this, that's a rising tide against Apple. Now, there is a rising, uh, a rising tide against Apple, specifically in Europe and likely here in, in, in the States too in terms of anti-competitive policies. I don't know what would happen if we got a situation where Apple did, as you pointed out, Tom, had to carve out some digital hole in the sheet that they figure out for Arizona only. But I do suspect that if it ever got to that, and this is the big question that I'm looking at, is there a moment where Apple makes a preemptive move? Now, I know they don't want to do anything until the government twists their arm so hard that they have to tap out. But is there a moment where they just suspect, you know what? We have enough of an idea of where everybody's coming from. We have enough of a way that we believe we can get on the right side of public opinion by making a certain decision. We can leave our enemies out in the cold if their efforts are not met exactly by what we want to do. We're just going to pull the trigger here. Apple's a stoic company when it comes to stuff like this. They have not come out, come out in the same way that Facebook has and just begged and pleaded publicly to come up with for, for there to be new laws written that they could have a help in writing. They have held their cards really close to the chest. They have said everything we're doing is perfectly within the law. Do they blink? I don't think they will. With stuff I don't like think they that. do. But the question is, is there a moment that can make them blink? I don't think it's any of these state situations. Uh, I don't think they. I don't think they blink at those. But yeah, that that is the question because after enough times, it gets harder and harder and harder each and every time. I don't know if you've heard of the Thread Protocol. It's a wireless communication standard uh, designed to replace legacy protocols like Z-Wave or Zigbee. It's part of the Connected Home Over IP, or CHIP, project, which is backed by most of the major smart home makers. So this isn't a, we're trying to get this uh, taken up. This has got a lot of industry momentum behind it. Thread promises faster response time, more reliable connections, and better battery life, so it's good when it's implemented. It's supported in a few devices out there, most prominently the Apple HomePod Mini, which can act as a bridge between Thread devices and the internet. The news today is that Eve Systems is widening its support by announcing Thread is coming in firmware updates for its Eve Aqua Sprinkler, to the new Eve Weather Outdoor Weather Station, which is coming March 25th, and to the updated version of Eve's smart plug, Eve Energy. Eve Energy can act as a repeater for a thread network as well. That's coming to the US April 6th and the UK May 4th. Eve previously updated firmware to support thread in its door and window sensors. Uh, so it's gonna have thread support on a lot of its devices. And one of the reasons they're the first to jump on this is that Eve processes all its data locally on devices and therefore it only works on HomeKit. And since HomeKit works on the HomePod mini and thread is supported by the HomePod mini, Eve thought, hey, uh, it'd be easy for us to adopt thread. It's interesting to me that Eve processes all data locally and only works on HomeKit because Amazon and Google require devices to have their own cloud services. So what Eve's doing is saying like, we'll just take the commands through HomeKit. You, you tell it, you wanna turn the light switch on or off, you wanna change the temperature, that just all comes through HomeKit and we'll do all the processing locally to protect your privacy. I mean, it reduces the surface area for attack. Whereas Amazon and Google require each device to be like, you need to be managing your device in the cloud and then send it into our device and we'll manage it from there. Yeah, but if somebody's like, oh, I want my home to be smarter. I mean, and you're like, oh, but I I like Amazon's voice assistant or I like Google's home services, uh, you know, offerings. I mean, this is somewhat limiting. Yeah, I, I think that there's a large scale trend, I think, that is happening in, in a lot of technology now, and that is a collapsing. 
that we might have we, we might have been at a point over the last year or so where the most things that are scattered were going to exist and and both inside uh, the IOT community and social networks and streaming services that that the next trend is all right the business model has proven itself now how many ways can these things work together that that's what the market pressure is here for so i i i think it would be nice if we could have a lot of ways that you didn't have to worry about uh, uh, how these things would connect with each other, but I don't know if we're ready for that yet. Yeah. All right. Tell us about the deep, deep blue ocean, Sarah. <laughs> Tom, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to. Circuit boards fail at intense pressures, such as in the deep, deep ocean, meaning that ocean-exploring robots need lots of bulk to protect their circuitry but we might be getting somewhere. A report in Nature describes a team of Chinese researchers operating a soft-bodied robot in the deep ocean during a successful 10-kilometer ride down into the Mariana tr Trench. If you're not familiar, it's about 200 kilometers east of the Mariana Islands and also the deepest oceanic trench on Earth. It's deep. The researchers were also inspired by species of snailfish, that appear to have adapted over time to being in deep water with skulls that don't close off entirely in order to survive the immense pressure in such deep water. A soft-bodied robot can mimic this flexibility by splitting up circuit boards among different locations in the soft body connected by flexible wires. Other components were put on larger boards to increase space and reduce pressure issues, and a new material was used for the actuators that didn't lose functionality under pressure. May not be a full replacement, however, since the robot's onboard battery supports less than an hour of operations, and its circuitry hasn't been made to do anything but swim in a circle. So we've, <laughs> we've, 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 we've got some stuff to do there, here. There's still some work to go. Okay. We, we, uh, yeah, we're, you know, although, str although, strides yet need to be taken. However, this is cool. Promising exploration of the deep end in, in, in the short term, right, of a pool. <laughs> you could, you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It could handle that pressure for sure. Yeah, no, this is this is pretty cool technology to be like, oh, usually we have to really reinforce this stuff with really thick uh, walls so that you know the pressure doesn't just collapse uh, the robot. And we figured out a way to not have to do that by by imitating a snail. Um, hopefully, they'll be able to figure out how to make more complex circuitry and have it do more than swim in a circle. Right? That that that's the next step. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. This one actually comes from a Discord discussion from Scott in Canada who said, just watch the trailer for the new Netflix series, Sky Rojo. Looks intriguing. And now I'm wondering how much does Netflix care about the U.S. domestic market? Obviously, it's still important to Netflix. But with all the other competing services in the U.S., certainly appears that Netflix is setting their sights on the international markets as their future. There are a number of high production movies and series that are dubbed to English, rather than the other way around. Not a complaint, just an observation. I think you're on to something, Scott, from Canada. It, it, like you said, it's not that the U.S. isn't important, but it's not the growth area. It's it's not where they're going to make the biggest strides. Right. Uh, oh, I also think that while there are certain markets that have been socialized to pay for this kind of content, and, and India is a massive growth market if they can crack it, they would not be the first American streaming service or Western streaming service to try to to look at the raw numbers of India and say, wow, if we can just break in here and find out that the culture there is is different than uh, of Western European and American audiences. Like there there is a tremendous thirst in India for free content like YouTube usage and stuff in, in India is is massive, but premium pay stuff. You know, maybe they'll be able to coax people over the uh, uh over 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 the, the the fence for it. But listen, I think man, Disney Hot Star has Disney Hot Star is huge in India, and it's for pay. I think that I don't think the pay personally. I don't think the pay block is the big uh, impediment. It's the content. Uh, you get the right content, you can get people over that wall, and to do that, you're you're still right, Justin. They have to work with local production and local sensibilities, yeah. which it looks like they're trying to do. That's always harder to do than it harder. It's easy to easier to say you're going to do, and it's harder to execute. I think that that's that, that's the better way to put it. Is it if if you come in and say no, Indians love American programming, and we're going to do our American yeah. version of Indian programming, then it's it you know it, it's it's easier said than done. 
If you're gonna, if you're not gonna, I think an Indian audience will watch it for free all day. They'll, they'll, they, that 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 has borne out on on YouTube. Paying for it, it's a different story. You you gotta you gotta hit it out of the park. Well, if you have thoughts about uh, <laughs> where Netflix should or should not expand next, or anything that we talk about on the show, or anything that we might talk about on a future show, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is where to send that email. We also like to shout out patrons at our master and our grandmaster levels. Today they include Carol. Hi, Tech Oki and Tim Ashman. Many, many thanks to our brand new bosses, John Falavalita and Roz McNulty just started backing us on Patreon. Thank you so much to the new bosses. And also the utmost of thanks to one and only Justin Barber Young. Mm, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make that dramatic. I'm not sure why. Um, thank you for accepting it graciously. Oh, I always, always. <laughs> yeah, uh, what's going on uh, with you? Well, you know, uh, uh, the politics keep uh, rolling along here at uh, the Politics, Politics, Politics program. We got a very fun project launching tomorrow on the PX3 show. Uh, it was an idea that Brian Brushwood had that I was stupid enough to help bring to fruition. It is schoolhouse rock meets degenerate gambling. It is... The amendments bracket. Mark <sighs> Madness comes. Uh, you will learn about all of the amendments to the Constitution, and you will eventually decide which reigns supreme by the end of the month. So go ahead and tune in for the first round. That is politics, politics, politics. Well, I can't wait to find out what the seeds are. This is going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, danos cinco minutos y te daremos las noticias más importantes en el mundo de la tecnología o te devolvemos tu dinero. Escucha Noticias de Tecnología Express disponible en español a dailytechnewsshow.com slash ntx. We are live Monday through Friday. Luna Stavianis, uh, at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We love to have you. If you join us live, please do so. We'll be back tomorrow with Patrick Norton and Len Peralta. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>